everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can fix up harsh and dark and distracting shadows in a portrait within Lightroom. So this is the photo that we are going to be editing today. Um, I've got all the camera information up here in the top left. This was shot on the Canon 5D Mark III and the Canon 85mm 1.2 Mark II lens. And as you can see, this is a very lovely portrait of our model. However, we do have some really bright highlights in this shot and also some really dark shadows, which are really obscuring um, the view of her face. In a portrait, I always believe that the eyes are the most important part. So I definitely want them to be a very prominent part of the image. And in this photo, the eyes are very dark and they get kind of lost in this photo. So we're gonna bring out those shadows in today's tutorial. I also just wanted to mention that this is a raw image. A raw image has much more information in it than a JPEG. So if you're shooting in JPEG and you wanna do this kind of edit, I would highly recommend to switch your camera over to raw so you can do these shadow recoveries and these highlight recoveries as well. Jumping straight into the editing, the first thing I want to do is bring up the exposure really high just to see how much information we have available in the photo. And as you can see, by bringing up the exposure at plus 175, we can recover all the details that are lost in the shadows of her face. So that basically tells me that there is hope for this photo and I should spend time editing it. So as you can see, just pulling up the exposure like this to bring the shadows back in her face doesn't really do any favors for the rest of the photo. As you can see, we've lost so much detail here in her arm, the background is really washed out, and overall, it just doesn't look that nice. So what I'm gonna do instead is bring back the exposure a little bit, just so we have a balance between the shadows being recovered and the highlights not getting too blown out. The next thing I wanna do is bring down the highlights, which will hopefully save some of this detail here and it does, which is really nice. So here's a little before and after of what we have so far. This is the before and this is the after. So already this is looking so much better. The next thing I wanna do is bringing up the shadows. So we're just gonna start pulling them up to see how it affects our image. And it is saving the detail in her face quite nicely. So I'm gonna leave it at about there. And then to bring back some contrast back into our image because it is looking a little bit flat from the edits that we've done so far, I'm going to bring down the blacks ever so slightly just to add that little bit of depth back into the image. So when I start lifting shadows, I've really noticed that in Canon's files, it brings out a lot of greens and you can really see it just here in her hair. It's looking a little bit green. So I'm going to bring up the tint ever so slightly just to counter that a little bit. This is looking pretty good so far, but I still think we can make the face look even more prominent with the lighting. So the next thing I wanna do is grab my adjustment brush and we're going to use a nice big soft brush. I usually like to make it as big as the area that I'm painting. And I'm just gonna draw just a stroke down here where the main shadows of her face are. And here is my selection so you can see what I've done. And from here, we're going to pull up the exposure. And that is really bringing out her face so nicely. I'm really happy with what that looks like. The next thing that I'm noticing now that we've brought up the shadows in her face is that the hair on the left side of the image is looking really, really dark. So I also want to pull up the shadows on that. So we're going to make a new adjustment brush. And this time I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and again, just paint right over the hair here. And that is my selection. And for the hair, I think I'm going to bring up the shadows. Maybe the blacks a little bit as well. And then as I mentioned, bringing up the shadows in Canon files, I feel like brings out a lot of green. So we're also going to bring the tints up quite high into the pinks, just to counter that a little bit. So here is a before and after before and after. 
So normally when I'm editing a portrait, I like to do these tonal corrections first before I get into any stylistic edits. So I usually like to do this, first of all, to make sure that my file is going to be savable and that I'm not wasting my time with curves and color edits when the tones can't be fixed. And the other reason is that I prefer to edit colors on an image that is balanced and just easy to look at. The first thing I want to do is I did realize I missed focus just a little bit on the eyes here. It's more focused on the hand as I was shooting at 1.4 and the 85 millimeter. So the first thing I'm going to do is sharpen up my image here. And you can use the masking tool to sharpen a particular area of your photo but I'm just gonna leave it to sharpen the entire image. The next thing I wanna do is add a tone curve and this is just going to be to add a little bit of style into the image and to also deepen the shadows a little bit and brighten the mid-tones a little bit. So I'm gonna start by pulling down on the shadows very slightly cause I don't wanna undo all the work that we just did fixing this up and then pull up here around like the mid-tone shadowy area. I would say the midtones are right in the middle, so I'm just pulling it up a little bit below that so it affects the shadows and the midtones. And then I might pull the shadows up again a little bit and the midtones up again a little bit. And that does make a very subtle change, but I do like adding this in because it does add a nice amount of contrast into the photos, so I'm really happy with what that looks like. Last but not least, to again tie in the image just a little bit more and add a little bit of an artistic flair to this photo, I want to give some color to it by using split toning. With split toning, I usually like to start with the highlights, and I normally like to bring my saturation up quite high so I can very easily see what I'm doing. Another option if you don't want to move your saturation slider up is that you can hold the shortcut alt or option down and move the hue around and it will show you what it looks like at a hundred percent. For me personally I feel like it looks too extreme it's a bit hard for me to tell exactly what it's doing so that's why I like to just pull up the saturation a little bit higher than what I would actually have it at. So I think for this image, I'm gonna go with my usual favorite and have a yellowy, creamy highlights, which is almost very slightly into the greens. So I'm really happy with what that looks like. And then once I'm happy, I pull down the saturation just to blend it in nicely into the photo. And then we are going to do the same thing with the shadows. And I think for the shadows, we're gonna go for a purpley look as I still wanna keep that warm vibe from the beach happening. If we go with something more blue, I feel like that would suit a more moody image or if it was shot on an overcast day. I like purple for golden hour. I think it's a nice complementary color to the yellow. Uh, so I'll bring down the saturation. And then last but not least, the only other thing that I wanna do is in HSL saturation. So something that I notice when I shoot during golden hour and I'm shooting harsh lit is that sometimes the yellows can be quite bright in a photo. So I'm going to bring the yellow saturation slider down and bring the orange saturation slider down a little bit as well. And I feel like that just helps with those really oversaturated highlights that are in the photo. So here is a before and after of the HSL. It's a very subtle edit, but I feel like it makes a nice difference. And oh, and here is a before and after of the split toning as well. It just added so much warmth to the photo, which I really love. So now that we've removed a bit of the oranges and yellows specifically from the photo, I also wanna now bring up my vibrance a little bit, just cause it was looking a little bit desaturated. So I think about plus 20 looks really nice. So here is our final before and after. This is the before, straight out of the camera. You can't really see her face. It's a bit of a boring photo. And then the after where I feel like she just stands out so much more and your eyes go directly to her eyes, which is what I really, really love in a portrait. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial and learned something from it. Please let me know in the comments if you've ever had to edit a photo like this that has either really harsh shadows or really bright highlights in it. But as always, thank you so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I make new videos every single Wednesday, so I will see you guys all next time. Bye.